Hi, welcome back to Hope 2020. We're so happy that you could join us today. Right now we have a new session. It's titled, How Asian Makers Unite During COVID-19, Practices from Japan, Malaysia, and China. And with us are Takashu, Shi, Rockets, and Rachel. And they'll be in the COVID, I mean in the uh, matrix talking about their COVID response while their presentation is going on. So first, let's play their presentation and we'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome to our session about how Asian makers unite during COVID-19. You'll hear practices from Japan, Malaysia, and China. I'm Rachel from DF Robot. We are based in Shanghai, China. My role in the community is to help the communication between different countries. I spent almost half a year traveling around the world each year. I also invite my friends to Shanghai um, to kind of do a little bit mix and match. For example, this is a video about me having a jam with wearable electronics and um, theater to the children. In February, after two weeks of quarantine, I start to feel a little bit depressed. I feel like I need to call for help. And my friends in the community actually are very supportive and we host a lot of online drinking parties to just share and talk to kind of help me get through that process. And then you know what happens. And this kind of tradition keep on so everyone in the community can get through that process together. That's why I invite my friends to this session to tell their stories in their own community so that we can hear all those great stories about how community actually unite during this special time. So we will hear practices from Rockets, Jane, and Takasu-san. Followed by that, we will have a panel discussion to hear different opinions in different communities. And then we welcome you to have your own questions. Um, yeah. First, let's welcome Rockets to share his practice in China about closed makerspace, more open maker community. Welcome. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. I'm Rockets, the founder of Mushroom Cloud Makerspace. This is our space in Shanghai, China. In the next few minutes, I want to share the COVID-19 impact on our make space and what we do to solve the problem. In mid-March, we cannot we can go back to office finally and have some coffee. In April, I went to my gym with masks. In May, the government started to encourage us to host a flea market to boost the economy. Also, my son can go back to school. Now he's going to school, very happy. In June, the theater will finally open. We can enjoy Swan Lake. Now, except cinema still closing, everything seems to go back to normal. Our make space now is open to public. When we shut down the make space, we start to thinking, how can we keep running? Before COVID-19, everything was offline. We believe that the face-to-face -face communication is very important to the community. Now, everything changes. Makers cannot go to the make space. We need to create a new environment to maker, which is we put our event online. At first, our staff have to learn from nothing about how to do live streaming. 
we were kicked off many times during the live show. But after 10 times, our highest bill online was almost 2,000 people. And we found an, another surprise. We can invite anyone from the world. As you can see, we invite Takasu-san, who was based in Tokyo, to be live with us. Thank you, Takasu-san. COVID-19 is bad, but if we work together, we can turn it into an opportunity. After that, we start thinking again, how can we stay connected with our member and the community? Same as Rachel, some makers feel lonely in that time. As a community, we think we should help them. We start to encourage them to make projects online. We found one inter interactive project to share with you. People A doing squat at home in front of the camera. At the same time, on people B's computer, there's a one monkey climbing the mountain. Every time, people A do one squirt, the monkey will go up. All the views online can also help monkey climbing up or down by comments. This enables everyone's participation. And then, we're never stopping thinking. As a maker, how can we help our society with our ability? Inspired by the event above, we found the most important things as a community leader is to empower creation. That's why we host an online challenge. It's open to all around China. We have received over 100 projects in one month. I will show you my favorite project. We all know temperature indicates who might get virus. Normally, we use a temperature measurement gun. The teacher needs to teach how it works to the students. Here, we use an AI camera called the Husky Lens with one IR temperature sensor. It can easily scan and show the temperature of each people. I believe next generation will may benefit from those projects. In conclusion, as a maker, we will always try to solve problems. Although the future is not clear, but we can still try to solve the problem by making. I hope we can make the future together as a community. Thank you all. Thank you for Rocket's sharing. And then we will go to Malaysia to see how this maker community Race to protect their frontliner. So let's welcome Jean. Thank you, Rachel. So here is my meeting. Uh, here is my topics. Kita jaga kita. Make a race to protect our frontliner. So my name is Jean. I run Makerspace in Malaysia. So I have several makerspace in universities, uh, governments, agencies, and then some community makerspace as well. I also build some interactive art design, and my main job is mostly on the IOTs and security side of kind of person. So during this COVID time, we create something called uh, the frontliner projects. So Malaysia side, uh, we've been seeing COVID cases getting very, uh, getting down in Malaysia for quite a while right now. So uh, it's been quite a good success that we are our country in fighting all this thing. But it's getting better, but still very far from power. <laughs> so uh, as I can see, our, 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 our chief uh, health minister actually said that, hey, we are still lacking on the supply side, that we do have uh, things that we still need, and precautions have to be taken. So, so 
we started this movement called Kita Jaga Kita. So the Kita Jaga Kita is a Malay word that means that we take care of ourselves. So how, how it all started in the, all this thing in the first place? So COVID actually really hit Malaysia in early March 2020. So we actually have doctors actually call us for help, say that, hey, can you guys your make a space right? can you guys make some PPE for us we actually need this thing for like uh, our, we have our, our hospital actually lacking on this PPE PPE stand for uh, uh, personal protection equipments that actually like face shields masks broke everything so the hospital itself due to the whole economy and logistic lockdown it's actually very hard to get supply for the hospital but then the case keep coming in so they actually in the need and very lack of supplies. So they actually said, that, hey, you guys make a space, can you guys make one for us? At least supply for, for, the, uh, for the hospital itself. So we think about it and then we start calling for a whole uh, maker communities in the whole Malaysia. So I was calling the whole 3D printer groups, said that, hey, 3D printer guys, maybe you want to take it now and see that, hey, can you guys print this? We have a need of this. Can you print this and pair with transparency chip? And then we send it over to your local hospitals and local clinic. And then we talk to our maker space partner as well. To we actually look at it and say, hey, can your space here operate during this uh, lockdown period? Is it possible that we get some of the material to you guys and you guys start cutting out and start making out the PPE itself? So, and here we start. So this is a very uh, down to earth, so I say communal projects. We open source our design. So, we noticed that uh, the face shields uh, design had been circulated in the internet when the COVID started hit on Europe. Uh, Pulsar itself shared out some uh, 3D printer design. But then again, uh, they are using on those expensive printer, the bigger printer, and they take longer times. So look at it and say, hey, do we have a lot of talents uh, designer in Malaysia as well. So we call for call arms and get designers to actually want this and to build the design to suit our low cost printer. So a lot of the printer in Malaysia, they're using something called Ender Trees or Ender 5. Those are like sub, like say, sub $300 uh, pre printers. And they have pretty okay print size, but uh, you need a few modification to make sure the print time is fast enough. So I think the last iteration, we managed to print one in less than 10 minutes for one, uh, one piece. So, and then it's, it lasts quite, quite fast as well. And then we actually have a stackable design and actually print it up. So the three printer groups actually start working on their own. And then uh, slowly they have uh, start gathering the groups of people around the whole Malaysia. They have mini communities, they have printers. So like, hey, if you have printers, I send you the file, start printing. Send it to your local hospitals. And then for the maker say itself, we do something uh, much more uh, reusable. We do something called laser cutter versions. Uh, we take our clicks, our supplies, and then we design some kind of uh, design that actually make it up. And we open source the design so that everyone else with a laser cutter can make it as well. So some of the people in our groups actually talk to the factory. They actually come to start up on the injection mode system. And some of the university in Malaysia, actually they are like more like a, a industrial university. They actually had their own injection team. So allow all of us, we'll start making all this thing. And in less than one week, we're actually getting a lot of this uh, face shield make and then ship out. So you can see our fake open source design. So we do a lot of a few design that the easier, simpler, whereby you just have a form and clips and then the transparent shape and you can get it on. Yeah, a lot of people say that, hey, Jin, why not you make those design alone? So uh, we did, we did make a lot of them, but again, for uh, medical fund miners, they usually wear an um, identify mask and they actually have glasses and everything. All those uh, simple masks, they have very easy cover their face and when they breathe, so the, you'll, you'll become fog in your face in the first place. And it's not comfortable to actually wear this uh, for long periods. So we did come out a few designs like the 3D printers one, we had the PP private version, we had the acrylic versions, we have a lot of different versions that we come out to make sure that uh, this thing suit their need. So all around Malaysia, the makers have created every single design they can find. They've been tested out and verified by doctors for the design. And then we find our supplies. Like, hey, you guys have enough PLA filaments? Who have enough stock? Can you like buy some of them and send it over to this place? 
like one of the reason that uh, this amazed me the most is actually Malaysia is a country separate by a sea. So we have East Malaysia, the Sabah, Sarawak, the Borneo Islands, and then we have the West Malaysia, which is the peninsula. So most of the people and tech people are actually located in peninsula. So when COVID happens, all flights stop. There's no logistic whatsoever in uh, from East Malaysia to West Malaysia. So we pretty much on their own. So the whole kita jar kitas, uh, the whole hashtag start to work out by magic. So we actually contacted over the internet the makers over in West East Malaysia, so that hey. We can't send material, we can't send uh, supply over to your hospital. And your hospital needs this. Can you guys work together? Can you guys work out some plans using our open source design and you actually help the supplies, the materials to them in the first place? And there we go. And we create times, all these things that we easily fulfill and we have donation drive, we have uh, uh, all this uh, mini mini communities start coming out and then we start coordinating them and then we start getting all these things delivered to the hospital. So these are our production uh, things. So safety as a main concern. So uh, we, we run this thing in a very uh, ad hoc and very mini style so that we prevent a lot of people getting one spot. And we make sure all our staff is in sanitizer by UV lamps. They like can see there's a hack out UV lamp that we, do, we design ourselves. And we make sure all of them is actually uh, cleans and sterilized before we send to the hospital. So we also make PPE scalp uh, using donation uh, donation fiber since that factory cannot be open. So it's a donation, all these things, then get it over to them. And then uh, yes, she send over to the scrub teams and everything, and PPE hoods, the ground, everything, and send over to the uh, hospital. So the hospital will get all these things uh, when they request for it. So you can see that uh, we send out face shields to a lot of communities, the police, the front enders, from the hospitals, the, uh, the, the medical person that's inside them. And so far, during our phase one, the first two, three months or this, uh, our maker space alone, we deliver more than 47 hospitals. We have helped at least 20,000 of frontliners easily on this on our effort alone. And the whole communities, the whole maker communities, I estimate because we don't actually have the actual number because uh, we, we didn't actually follow out the numbers when they start doing a lot of things together. It's to said more than 500,000 uh, easily. And I think by now it should be a million count. So this whole movement, the Kita Jaga Kita hashtag, is actually a very, very powerful tool that we actually discover. So it can force, it empower the people let people that they are wondering in their homes that, hey, I'm in lockdown, what can I do? What, what is the thing that I can make and can help in these situations? So we give them a mission, we give them a purpose, we protect our frontliners, we reduce our stress over our healthcare system, and then we let the healthcare people know that, hey, you are not alone out there. Makers and Malaysians are actually behind them, they are actually ready with all our force to support you. And this whole thing and bring along the whole communities together and we work out our plans and then we get it out. So if you notice uh, all these things, uh, all these many facial things, so we have one major problem that we, have, uh, we haven't solved in the first place. So you see, we got the PP. So how do we get them to the hospital safely? You see, uh, we can make these things at their home but then we do not want to risk ourselves delivering to a very high risk places like hospitals, whereby there are COVID cases, active COVID cases in the happening right now. So the whole bunch of NGOs like us, 100% Projects, America, tax communities, and multiple policies, we decided to form a new movement. And this is a room marketer and we call it the fulfillment service around the whole Malaysia just for COVID. So we coordinate all the manufacturers, suppliers, donors, and then we verify them, make sure that all the manufacturer is valid, all the suppliers is met our specs, and the donors actually, and all the deliveries, uh, hospitals, the request is all in check. So then we make sure all the shipping from China, from Malaysia, from East Malaysia, we, and we're drafting out military planes, 
to make sure the military send the supply over to East Malaysia for us and we make sure every single state is not left out. We supply all of them through our mind. So this is what we do uh, during this uh, Roma Kitas and then we do have a lot of coverage uh, in the newspapers and the, in the medias and lastly is a world economy. World economy forum actually cover us that how we actually do our, our, our vision and entrepreneurship so actually make sure that things actually get in check. All this on for communities. So the last and last thing to share before you guys before I leave is actually we actually build a centralized platform. So my PP Hub is actually what we call a, a centralized platform that we actually do uh, for hospital to actually request PP. So one of the problems we notice in the whole system is actually there are a lot of duplication requests and there are a lot of like uh, fake requests. So we want to make sure that all these requests, all the PP requests is actually verified and checked and then uh, have someone to say that, hey, this hospital really, really need this equipment. Can we get someone to send it them? So this is a centralized, uh, centralized system that actually get all the things in check. And then you can request and can contribute to them. And the best thing about this is uh, we build this thing in like three days or less than a week using Ruby on Real. Uh, and then government had take a notice on this and say, that, hey, we are the help, uh, we still help. Can we use your data? Can we help us to build this thing? So the currently the tech lead is actually working very closely with the Minister of Health Malaysia to say that, hey, how we can integrate this thing into the system so when the second wave hit, when the next thing hit, how we can better uh, make sure ourselves is well prepared in a sense. That's all for me for now. Thank you so much. Thank you for James sharing. Then we'll welcome Takasu-san to hear his story about how the makers work for COVID-19 situation in Japan. Welcome, Takasu-san. Okay, uh, he share for the how the maker work for COVID-19 situation in Japan. Thank you for uh, kindly introduce Rachel. My name is Takasu. I had been 39 cities and 107 maker events in Japan. I still support the Maker Fair Singapore, Shenzhen, and also the Maker Carnival Shanghai. In last 10 decades, I spend uh, time to support for the Maker community, like uh, Singapore, Shenzhen, Kathmandu, and Barcelona. I hope to connect, uh, to connect each country's Maker's community more closely. Current, I'm mm -hmm. based in Shenzhen, but uh, it is uh, under COVID-19 situation. I cannot back to Shenzhen temporarily in Japan, my homeland. Also, last decade, I had been around 100 maker spaces in around the world, but still my trip is uh, suspended by COVID-19. In this situation, COVID-19 and makers in Japan, I explain about uh, how we survive and how we make it better world about uh, anti-COVID-19. In COVID-19 influence are uh, spreading better in Japan, but uh, still better than you and the US. We Japanese are not panicked yet. We have, have to control the second wave of pandemic. In case in case in Japan, still around uh, 300 to 500 each day in our countries. In this number is uh, still increasing. We have to care for the second waves. In this numbers is uh, better than US and Euro, but uh, we cannot uh, smile yet. In the beginning of April. Our Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is a says a statement about uh, emergency declaration. That means uh, almost uh, shut down the business and the economies. And uh, after one month, the beginning of May, we start to my economy and uh, life on the city again. But the uh, COVID number is uh, start to increasing again. Now situation is uh, more difficult, more complicated. In March and April, the situation is very simple. How to stop the pandemic? 
But now we are front of more complicated situation, restart the economy and stop pandemic. The situation in Japan is uh, getting more difficult. We open source software engineer in Japan is uh, making the information platform called the COVID-19 dashboard by open soft source software and open data. Hospital bed occupancy is uh, quite uh, important because of the overshoot of occupancy in hospital is uh, cannot care for the new uh, COVID-19 cases. We have to keep in the empty bed for the new cases. Open source community gathering the data from the official statement and information from each prefecture and making the uh, platform about uh, which prefecture and uh, how many beds still empty or uh, occupied. This is a very uh, great uh, dashboard for the all of COVID uh, all of uh, information. But uh, in this platform is uh, simple, but uh, how to make it uh, not so simple. Every prefecture and the official hospital is uh, explain about the bed occupancy, but the data format is uh, not so simple. Some hospital is uh, only the PDF, some government is uh, only the facsimile. We have to care for the from PDF or from facsimile or from the paper or from very simple HTML to convert to machine readable format, like JSON. Make and share for the data list fast and some engineer making the reading PDF and making AI software by GitHub. Uh, sometimes using the human operation each week. Different format and machine readable data to convert to JSON. The PDF to JSON API is uh, released by Fukuno Taisuke. He is, uh, he spent uh, many of the technology for the make, how makes open data. Most of the successful case is the uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government uh, you, uh, is a decided to open source project with the officially by Japanese open source community called uh, Code for Japan. COVID-19 in Tokyo, free open source software platform information dashboard. In this dashboard is a very successful information platform in Japan because of share for the many prefectures. In this project source code, share to all prefectures in Japan include official and private. And in this project is a, a gather for the many people's interest. Many open source software engineers uh, force for uh, in this platform getting better. In these three weeks, uh, over 750 pull requests by 224 engineers within three weeks. In this platform getting better and fork to many, many prefecture in all around Japan, like uh, Toyama Prefecture, Chiba Prefecture, Saitama Prefecture, they can make the uh, platform easily because of uh, based on open source. And totally over 200 P uh, open source engineers force for the make software in Japan. They are so activated in online, develop, uh, developed so many services for COVID-19 by open source. So many services, donation, takeaway map, study at form, and documentation, etc., etc. Many services released uh, almost uh, once a day. And uh, they can, uh, they, they shared uh, own platform each other, getting better by communication. Not only the, uh, in this effort is not only the software, but open source hardware makers also start to making too. They try to make DIY sanitization tool and how makes a happy mind in work from home. In beginning of, Ma beginning of May, Tokyo Ma uh, Kyoto Maker Fair also moved to online. They share they share own software, uh, own project by Twitter in whole of the day. Japanese hardware maker also be getting idea how against to COVID-19 to continue the making. The other hand, um, one more thing, this open source software movement in Japan 
pushed to Japanese official governments. Some government agency open GitHub account and start to collaborate with open source software community in Japan. Like uh, in this uh, left one is uh, by the Ministry of Trade and Industries open the GitHub account and they share address combat, Japanese local address combatter to more machine readable. The right one is a COVID-19 radar uh, connects with uh, Apple and Google's uh, trace together platform. They also collaborate to open source community. This is my conclusion. Work from home and the force from COVID-19 is uh, so stressful and boring. But, and many maker event uh, was cancelled and uh, from uh, cancelled from this situation. Also bad things. However, open source community and civic tech movement in Japan is uh, getting better day by day. In this current situation, open source movement and civic tech movement is uh, still getting rapidly, uh, get, getting grow rapidly. I hope the technology makes better world at uh, these times. And uh, of course, I hope to my trip again. But the current situation is uh, getting more good impact to digitization in Japanese society. Thank you. Thank you, Takasu-san. Indeed, it is a difficult time for the maker community and for everyone around the world. But we still unite to get through this. So. In the panel discussion, I will probably start with one simple question, is what do you think about the good side and bad side happened during the COVID-19 situation in your community? Okay. Yes, still in Japanese society is a very stressful under COVID-19, but uh, some local government try to do the open data and collaborate with the engineers by information technology. I hope to more remote work, more focused digital, and society getting more shift to digital. digital. Mm. Mm. Digitalization, maybe. Yes. The yes. trend is already there. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Yes, yes. 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 Mm. Jean, how about your side? Yeah, from Malaysia side itself, so what we see is actually a uh, uh, very rapidly transformations from a uh, very traditional uh, commerce retail business over to online business in a very short term away during this COVID. So I have friends who actually do a point of sale system for restaurants. They get a team out together in one week time. They can hack out a delivery system based on their POS system platform. So any vendors, any restaurant that suddenly using their system can now actually do delivery service. So they can send food, they can send um, items straight from their store to the, uh, the user immediately without in, in a very fast time. And we see how a lot of users actually start picking out on the e-wallets, uh, all the online retail payments. So we see the transformation just change everything over in one or two months time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also some changes, yes, but mm, both sides, is, yes. Um, and Rockets? Um. Um, uh, just like uh, before, uh, I, I, I think that uh, COVID-19 is bad and uh, um, we, we, we should uh, get together as a community so we can make it an opportunity. Uh, so I, I think the, 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 the communication is, is not changing. Although we cannot face to face to communication, but uh, yes, we have a, a internet, so we can we can connect with the uh, with the net. So I think it's 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 also an opportunity to change. So yeah, it, it's also have a, a bad side and a good side, and I think we, we should grab the the opportunity to to make it better. Thank you. Indeed, the connection between community is very important. And no matter what, we will try to stay together and stay connected. And my next question would be, what do you think will be the future after this COVID-19 situation? And how our maker community would change 
according to that. Okay, another Q&A. How makes the future for the makers? I strongly hope we makers will back on track. We can trip again in the very near future within one year or two years. The other hand, we need more and more digitization and connect more closely by digital technology. In these three months, almost each two weeks, I will running the international conference like in this hope. I strongly believe we can uh, connect each other again and uh, in this situation. Thank you. So Richard, when you talk about the future side, what the future will be coming on the, like say the COVID case, I, I think the best way I can say is that the latest study from Harvard says that even with antibodies uh, available, we only cease to have less than 300 days of uh, what you call it, the vaccine effect, effect, effectiveness. So this thing won't go away in five to 10 years at least. So COVID is here to stay and the new normal is here to stay as well. So how do we see uh, the maker communities can help in this situation is that we are the front lines and pioneer of the technologies. We should help creating a new SOP, the new method that we can interact with each other, so that, like for example, thermal scanners, uh, effortless thermal scanners, or checking systems, the QR code checking system that we can easily get, and then we help people with not so tech savvy to make sure they follow them and then we can track them easily. So, I see we should be okay. I mean, our, we've been running our countries for like almost one month now so after the lockdowns. And things are starting getting back normal. And a lot with a lot of innovations happening here and there in terms of retail side, a lot of people start to change their paradigm, to shift the paradigm from just doing a fully offline business to online. And people are start saying that, hey, if I'm gonna go to this place, uh, what is the possible thing that I can do to prevent myself getting hit from COVID? So people have start considering this uh, as an option line. So I think uh maker says and makers itself can help uh, make this process much more seamless. Like for example, we can help them design and develop custom solutions that actually integrate with their current uh, what they call it, business opportunities and business uh, business model. I think that's a way to go. And I heard it, uh, for me, uh, uh, event like this is uh, unpre unprecedented. I mean, it's unimaginable in our lifetime. So. And this is a good time for us to actually show that how resilient we are in terms of uh, getting hit by the uh, COVID and the, the disaster everything. I think we can make it through and we can go up with stronger. Thank you, Rachel. About the future, I think that a lot of things will be online. It's uh, unstoppable. And the second thing is I see a lot of uh, lifestyle projects on our uh, make space and the community. I think it's not necessarily high tech for that because COVID-19 make us realize that how normal life really matters. Makes are the one who make a better world. Let's make that world together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rocket. Thank you, Dean, and thank you, Takasu-san. Thank you for your time in sharing all of these good practices from your Milko community. And now let's move on to a Q&A session to hear some questions from the audience. Hi, and welcome back to Hope 2020. We have the speakers with us for this COVID response in Asia, Japan, China, and Malaysia. We have with us Takasu, Jin, Rachel, and Rocket. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining us. Yes. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. 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 We have a, a few questions in the in the chat, and I'll go ahead and start right in. Our first question is: uh, there was a question about making the uh, PPE, and uh, you answered the question. But I'd like you just to answer the question: How did you make the PPE? 
on the printers and how did you put it together? Oh, so uh, I think the special question asked about the PP scrub itself. So the scrub is actually a one-time use. Uh, what we get is actually we get donations from the textile company. So would they have this uh, 22 gram to 30 grams uh, PP, polypropylene, uh, non-woven cloth. So it's actually come in a whole giant roll, uh, a whole, whole, whole tube. So we actually cut it up using a textile cutter. It's a, basically a zigsaw with a moving blade. And then we have a design out by the fashion designer to actually come out the design for kids, for the adults, for the uh, female uh, male. So we, according to the design, we actually draw the template on it and slowly cut it up. And then we then send this cut out pieces to the uh, person who do the uh, tailors to actually do a uh, sewing out. So then we actually packet it, uh, disinfect it, and then send it over to the hospital, anyone that we need it. So there are also factory who actually uh, run all the whole production line to actually just making this. So yeah, so that's how we actually make it at LMB, you know, you know. And I think uh, you can actually get all the templates, everything is online as well. Oh, very good, very good. Such an important thing to have PPE during this pandemic. All right, our next question is, uh, do your maker spaces have many young adults and kids participating? And follow up is what backgrounds do your maker space members have? Are they technical or something like that? Uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, our maker space is uh, uh, accept uh, all age uh, people, but uh, uh, in, in the in the in, the, in that time, uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, students uh, are, are blocking, uh, how can I say, stay at home and uh, they, they have to uh, watch the network uh, classroom. So they cannot uh, come to our space, but uh, the adults can, can, can join the online meeting, something like that. So uh, we, we have no limit to the, to the ages. So um, yeah, and, and now for now, uh, 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 we just realized that the, uh, the, the, the cinema is open and the, 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 the people finally can go watch movies. So uh, uh, wow. every, every, every people can come to our uh, walk, uh, make space and uh, have fun with making something. That's yeah. great, that's great. We're getting back to normal, they say. Okay, do you think, okay, the question is, how do the business models work in your maker space? Like external funding, donations, member fees, grants, how do you sustain yourself financially running the maker space there? Uh, basically, we, we have, uh, we have uh, our uh, sponsor, uh, DF Robots, and uh, we have another sponsor is uh, 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 Software Park, uh, some kind of, uh, um, uh, how can I see that? Rachel, can, can you help me? Um, uh, some sort of like a industrial park, a government funding sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And, and, and the, 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 the uh, industry park, they provide the, the, the space. So we, uh, we, we are not uh, 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 pay the rent of the, the, the space. And uh, for for the for the running, uh, DF robots uh, uh, will send the, the people who uh, send the employee to help to to running the space. Uh, but basically, we we are we are a self organization. Uh, our makers, our members will be uh, help to running the system. So when 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 uh, when nobody uh, no uh, administration in there, the, the 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 member will help to clean the room, uh, to maintain the space, uh, maintain the, the the equipment. And the, as I said before, the the equipment, a lot of equipment is donation by the by the members. So they will uh, help to to do that. Yeah. So we are not That's afraid great. to. Uh, the, the the financial things. So for my side, um, uh, Malaysia side, so our space right now, the wind, the place I'm in right now, I can turn off the, the, the show background. So what, what happened is, uh, we actually, we actually provided by the uh, the school itself. So actually, this maker space actually located in the university. 
So the locations and the space actually and the equipment it needs for at the university. So we as the external partner come in to run the space to help organize events and help students to actually understand how to use the tools and everything. So we do have a few other uh, smaller maker space that mostly in mall everything. And our revenue come from making events, uh, doing workshops and all these things. But it is, it is a bit tough on uh, during the COVID time because uh, event, most of them, the bigger event get closed. But we do uh, continue runs a few the uh, event to helping the poor and uh, young adults, everything. It's still running right now. And we are figuring how to do it online through videos to uh, meetings and conferences like that. Yeah, yeah. Great. In Japan, it's also a similar situation uh, as US and China and uh, other all over the world. Some uh, maker space heads up for the profitable, like uh, Tech Shop Tokyo and uh, some other places is uh, very difficult to continue. But uh, more maker space for the only for the community, like uh, Mushroom Crowd uh, style maker space is uh, still keeping for surviving. No employee and uh, not uh, lending the place to others and survive only for the members. These maker spaces are still continue and running in Japan. That's great. That sounds great. All right, Rachel, did you want to add something to that? Um, yeah, I I think so. For the mushroom cloud maker space right now, um, one of the one of the fee that they can actually get is member fee. So mm -hmm. as we said, like we have one sponsor and also the industrial part, which is government support. And we have the member fee. Um, and on the other side, here in China, a lot of people, they actually, how to say, the, the, the companies, they want to get innovation ideas. So they wanted to host workshops for the employees, or they have hackathons for the new ideas, for the new products. And they will come to us as well for yeah. kind of services. That's excellent. Yes. Yeah. All right. We've got a few more minutes left and I have another question here for you. Do you think that the COVID-19 crisis has made your space stronger and more cohesive? Hmm. And who wants to start with that? Rachel? Um, truth be told, I would say it is. <laughs> it is, you know, it's a difficult time and we see a lot of members, they actually communicate and they glue each other more because they would find out that the connection between people is more important than ever. Um, you know, although through online or through different ways, but as a community, we still need to be stay connected. And that kind of support really helped us get through this whole process. So what I see in our community, yes. <laughs> okay, sounds good. And I guess everybody agrees with that. You wanna or does anybody else want to make a comment on that? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a question from uh, the the chat room there. So, does do the governments and industry funder expect to get things in returns, like products, ideas, and innovation they can use? Uh, in terms of Malaysia side, so most of our funder is actually uh, CSR fund, I mean corporate social responsibility. So they don't actually expect something come from there. Government side, uh, if we're taking a grants that with specific targets, I think yes, they do expect something out of it. But if we uh, more like applying for a, a certain programs or anything like, then they don't actually expect a, a, a ideas or like innovation come from there. Okay, thank you. I think we've got time for just one more question. Uh, does the government? Well, I'm just going to follow up with a COVID question. Do you think this COVID will have a big impact for the future maker spaces? And as you bring more people in, how will this impact you in the future? Who wants to take it first, Rocket? Yeah, Rocket will be the one. Okay, yes, I think the, the impact will be uh, true. And, and I, I think uh, uh, they will ask uh, the maker or the, the people to realize that the life really, really matters. So um, I think uh, 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 a lot of a maker will change to their change their uh, mind. Maybe they are not making some 
high technology things they will uh they, they will uh, focus on their life so uh do something really help not just uh, um for fun i mean so right. uh, in china i think that will be um uh, most uh, importance for the makers that's okay. my thank you very much uh, yeah Thank you. Um, we're out of time. I want to thank you very much, uh, Rachel, Jin, Takasu, and Rocket for joining us and your perspectives on COVID in Malaysia, Japan, and China. Thank you from all of the volunteers and the attendees. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well